أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهتد فلا مضل له ومن يهتد فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله All praises due to Allah, the Lord of the heavens and the worlds, to whom we belong and to whom we shall return. One phrase that I hear a lot when I am either attending khutbahs or just habaqahs in general or things of the sort, one thing that is mentioned a lot to me, or mentioned just a lot in general, is this quote, uh, and that is that, you are the average of the five people closest to you. And I've heard this a lot of times uh, and throughout my entire life. And I've always reflected on this quote and felt it in a way. And I realized how accurate it is. If you think of the five people closest to you right now, this could be someone in your family, one of your friends, etc., etc., you would notice that you, in fact, do inhibit characteristics of all five people in you, in a way, you are a combination of them. And this is a very important and significant fact. And that is why, for today's khutbah, my topic is the importance of sohba, or companionship. And I wanted to go over the Islamic importance of sohba, and I also wanted to talk about what type of sohba, what type of friends you should pick, what type of people you should surround yourself in your life. So inshallah, with this uh, speech, uh, uh, you'll be able to gain beneficial knowledge that might be able to help you in the long run. So to start off, what is the Islamic importance of having good friends? What is the Islamic importance of having a good sohbah? Sohbah, which translates to companionship, as I mentioned before, in Arabic, in Islam is a very top, important aspect and topic. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has designed this, he knows our psychological nature as human beings. And the people that you choose to be around, the people that you, or choose not to be around actually, either or, can affect your personality, your character, and how you carry yourself out in society, as well as your akhlaq in many different ways possible. And therefore, there's a reason why we have multiple reminders in both the Quran and the Hadith about why we should be picking good friends and why we should be surrounding ourselves with good people. I'll go with the most basic example that I'm pretty sure everyone has heard since the days in Islamic school, or Madrasa, or whatever you want to call it. And that is the example of the fragrant seller and the blacksmith. Whereas a good friend is parable to a fragrant seller in the aspect of, even if you don't directly deal with him, the fragrance from his store will be left upon your clothes and you'll be given off a good smell. Whereas a blacksmith, even if you don't physically deal with him, the smell of the hot coal is going to stick on your clothes, as well as the fact that you might be burned as well from being surrounded by that fire and that nature. And that, in a way, is a very, very like uh, good example of what uh, a certain group of people do to you. Good friends, in a sense, leave a positive sort of lingering effect on you, uh, for lack of better words. Um, both in the eyes of maybe society, but also in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like when you surround yourself with good people, you'll, you know, there's obviously going to be that whole societal thing where people look around you and say, oh, so and so, Falana, Falana, he's with this person, that word, therefore he might be a good person. Whereas when you hang around with bad people, the opposite will happen. But, you know, the eyes of society don't matter to anything to the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And being around good people, is a very positive thing in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as I'll give examples in the future. But also, being around bad people, or being around a bad sohbah, will not be seen as pleasant, both to your deen and to your ikhlaq, but to the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want to bring up a two verses in the Quran, uh, in Surah al Furqan, verses 28 to 29, where this is mentioned, um, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <laughs> يا ويلة ليتني حلم أتخذ فلنا خليلا لقد أضلني عن الذكر بعد إذ جاءني وكان الشيطان لإنسان خذولا 
Last time the ayah here is talking about people on the day of judgment who has surrounded themselves with bad people and says, Woe to me! I wish I had never taken so and so as a close friend. It is he who has truly made me stray away from the reminder after it had reached me, and Satan has always betrayed humanity. Now, as Muslims, we do know that our biggest enemy that we will ever face throughout our lifetimes, throughout our existence, is the devil, is Shaitan. And Shaitan has made it his mission, so long as he exists, which is basically eternity until the day of judgment, that he will do whatever he can do to misguide us and to take us away from the straight path, from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, Shaitan has been doing this for thousands and thousands, for centuries, for millenniums, and he's not stupid. He knows what he's doing. One of the ways that he targets people, targets me, you, all of you, is through your company. By surrounding yourself, by, by putting, in this, uh, yeah, by convincing you to surround yourself with bad people, or even just convincing you to pick up the bad habits of bad people that surround you, Shaitan, in a way, manipulates you and convinces you into picking up their habits and becoming bad. And therefore, it is important with, uh, for us to make sure that we surround ourselves with good people so that that effect of Shaitan is ruined. But I want to go back to what a, a little topic that I mentioned before about how being surrounded by good people in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a good thing. You see, on the day of judgment, you will be resurrected, with, you will likely be resurrected with people that you choose to be around. Omar Suleiman, I'm pretty sure all of you guys know him, he's a very famous scholar. I was listening to one of his lectures a while back, and he mentioned that the company that we choose here, as in on this world, in this dunya, will likely be who we're going to be resurrected with, and who we end up spending eternity with. So choosing your friends wisely does not just mean the greater purpose of this world, but in fact, to a greater extent, the next. And of course, this means by surrounding yourself with good people. Good friends can bring you out of, uh, bring you to Jannah, or even literally take you out of Jahannam. But a man came to Prophet Muhammad and asked in a Sahih Bukhari hadith, O oh Allah's Apostle, what do you say about a man who cannot catch up, who loves some people who cannot catch up with their deeds? Allah subhanahu wa Apostle says, Everyone will be with whom he loves. And what that essentially means is that any believing person, even if they might be lacking or have bad habits on certain things, if they choose to surround themselves with people who are good and people who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or dedicate themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not separate them, meaning that they will be going to Jannah together. And there's instances, in fact, where people who be who are in Jahannam will literally be taken out of Jahannam uh, by their friends who are in Jannah just because of this. That's not, that, this doesn't mean that you do whatever you want in your life and just surround yourself with good people. But what this rather means is that choosing the right people to be around can quite literally save you in the after. I want to end this part with a, another verse from the Quran that I read and found very interesting when writing this topic. And that is, I'll just find this one here. In Surah, in chapter 43, verse 67, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Close friends, that day, meaning the day of judgment, will be enemies to each other, except for the righteous. And I want you to think about it for a moment. On a day like the day of judgment, if you've ever seen like an apocalyptic movie or anything like that, you notice that the people are just running freely and mindlessly, those are the ones that die or don't make it. Whereas the people who work together, they're the ones that survive and end up, you know, continuing. Now, of course, the Day of Judgment is something much, much, much worse than any movie that a human can make. But the point stands is that you would need to be around as many people, you would need to have as many allies as you can on a tense and terrible time like that. And while most of humanity will be so tense, they'll be focusing on themselves during this calamity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, that the righteous will stick among each other. And therefore, it is important for you to stick around the righteous and to be righteous yourself. So I gave all this Islamic importance and all of this uh, sort of it, Islamic importance about uh, what uh, type of sukhba, what type of company you should be around. But what do you do? How do you do it? So what type of friends should you have? 
Now, the first point that I want to say is to bring out the people who bring the best out in you. And this is an obvious and give and take. It's pretty straightforward. Be around people who are religious. Be around people who are God-fearing. Be around people who do good things. You know, avoid people who, avoid groups of people who encourage you to do bad, whatever it may be. But pick people who bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This could be through prayer. This could be through, you know, uh, charity. This could be through however. But just pick people who have good hearts and who have good character and who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And pick these people to encourage you. Uh, pick these people because they will encourage you to be uh, on your game. It's it's very it's very psychological. It's very straightforward. You might it might seem insignificant at first, but when you actually do it, you'll realize how subtly being around certain people will affect your mentality. In addition, a really good example that I heard about this topic was the story of the wolf and the sheep. Well, not really a story, but more of an example. Whereas sheep who are together, when being attacked by a wolf, have a higher chance and likeliness of surviving. Whereas a sheep who is by itself will be gobbled up by a wolf. And what this basically means is that with all negative influences and bad things that you could be around in the world, when you're surrounded by good company and you're stuck tight to them, you're less likely to fall into bad habits and sin. Whereas if you're alone and by yourself, it's more likely to happen. In addition, you should pick people, of course, who are good. You should also pick people who you yourself are comfortable around and help you enjoy and nurture yourself. Because oftentimes when we're talking about picking friends, like I mentioned, you do want to be around people who are high achievers, whether it's be in the dean or the dunya. You want to be around people who pray, who fast, who do charity, etc., etc. But you also want to be around people whom you are comfortable with and who make you feel good as well. Because, let's face it, this dunya, in this life, there's a lot of problems. And sometimes the things that get us through our, these problems is the good people that we're around. A, a very important topic that isn't talked about as enough in Islamic circles is the importance of self-care and nurturing yourself, nurturing your nafs, nurturing your soul in a way where you're sustaining yourself. When you surround yourself around people who you're comfy, whether it be people who you know, make you smile, make you laugh, or make you feel good, however it may be, this helps you on a personal level, it helps your mental health, and it helps basically, like I mentioned, self-nurture you so that you, you go by every day a lot better. In addition, people like these help you de-stress, and they help you, in a sense, encourage good parts of yourself to come out that you might not even know you have, and this might help you in the long term later on. And the last point I want to bring up for this part is to lead by example and be by friends who don't, or be friends with people who need one. I mentioned that you should choose friends who maybe nurture you or even maybe, you know, and help you improve. But you should also be that friend as well. If you notice that, if you notice that a friend is lacking, for example, you shouldn't ostracize them or cut them off if they're lacking on their dean or whatever, however it may be. You should still be friends with them, you should still stay close to them, but you should encourage them to be better people. You know, when I say surround yourself with good friends and avoid bad people, this doesn't mean to cut off anyone who might be lacking, who might be struggling with their being, or so, uh, in one way or another. Still stay close to them, still stay with them, but try to be the positive influence in their lives that they might need. In addition, and a really important topic right here, is if you can't, you know, if you can't do that, at the very least what you could do is surround yourself with the youth. The youth are very young, they're very impressionable, and they can get wrong messages like this in a heartbeat. And that is why it's important for us as people who are older to go to, the, uh, to be there for the youth and to provide a good example for them and to be good role models for them. Anyone can be a role model in the right way. And it's important for you to stick around the youth for that matter and to and to sort of help them build upon themselves, build upon their confidence, nurture them, and also help them improve. And the benefit from this is Sotpajaria. Now, there's when you die, all of your good deeds will be gone, except for a few. And one of them is Sotpajaria, which are, you know, certain Sotpas that will continue even after you pass. 
and positively influencing someone. Maybe it might be, you know, encouraging them to start donating money or encouraging them to pray or encouraging them to teach, whatever it may be. But when you spread these words and these people act upon the actions based on your words, you will be receiving good deeds for that as well, which can very much help you out in the long run, could save you from Jahannam and put you in Jannah. Now, to wrap up this speech, um, I wanted to talk about what the importance of a good, what the, the importance of sohbah, and how having good friends means you have a good life and a good after. And I talked about the Islamic importance of sohbah, as in what the Quran and Sunnah have to say about picking good friends, but I also talked about what type of friends you should pick, how you should, in a sense, what type of people you should surround yourself with, and why you should surround yourself with them. And inshallah, May we all be in a uh, well, may we all be in good sahfas and good circles with people who help us continually improve and become better people. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for uh, forgiveness of myself, everyone and everyone in the Ummah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help anyone going through a hard time. I will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help improve anyone who's struggling and to help continually nurture those who are try, uh, doing well. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله ولكم لسائر المسلمين استغفروه إن الله غفور رحيم السلام عليكم Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا على الصلاة هيا على الصلاة هيا على الفلا هيا على الفلا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله الذي له ملك السماوات والأرض يحكم ما يريد بعث النبيين بالأمر بالمعروف والنهي عن المنكر وما هو بالظل من للعبيد أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله الهادي إلى طريق سديد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعه دينه الحميد أما بعد فيا معشر الإخوان اعلموا أن من آداب المعاشرة الإسلامية الأمر بالمعروف والحسنة والنهي عن كل منكر وسيئة 
فقد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من راى منكم منكرا فليغيره بيده فان لم يستطع فبلسانه فان لم يستطع فبقلبه وذلك اضعف الايمان فقال عليه الصلاه والسلام ما من رجل يكون في قوم يعمل فيهم بالمعاصي ويقدرون على ان يغيروا عليه ولا يغيرون الا اصابهم الله الا اصابهم الله منه بعقاب قبل ان يموتوا قال الله سبحانه تبارك وتعالى في القران المجيد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كنتم خير امه اخرجت للناس تامرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله بارك الله لنا ولكم في القران العظيم ونفعنا واياكم منه بالايات والذكر الحكيم انه تعالى جواد كريم قديم ملك بر الرؤوف الرحيم ورب حليم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما امر واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ارغاما لمن جحد به وكفر واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد الخلائق والبشر اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد نور القلب وقرة العين وعلى آل محمد فيا أيها المشتاقون إلى رؤيا جماله صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما خصوصا منهم ذي الأصل العريق أمير المؤمنين سيدنا أبي بكر الصديق رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى زاهد الأواب الناطق بالحق والصدق والصواب أمير المؤمنين سيدنا أبي حسن عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى كامل الحياء والإيمان أمير المؤمنين سيدنا عثمان بن عفان رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى سد الله الغالي أمير المؤمنين سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى تمام العشرة المبشرة وعلى سائر الصحابة والتابعين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أنصر الإسلام والمسلمين واخذ الكفرة والمبتدعة والمشركين وكن اللهم حافظهم وموئدهم وناصرهم يا رب العالمين ويا خير الناصرين اللهم شتت شمل أعداء الدين ومزق جمعهم يا مبيد الظالمين اللهم انصر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واخذل من خذل دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واجعل اللهم آمنة مطمئنة سائر بلاد المسلمين 
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين اعلموا أنما الحياة الدنيا لعب وله وزينة لعب وله وزينة وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر وتكاثر في الأموال والأول الذي كمثل غيث أعجب الكفار كمثل غيث أعجب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج فترى ثم يهيج فتراه مصفرا ثم يكون وفي الآخرة 
وَالْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ وَمَغْفِرَةٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانٌ وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين سابقوا إلى مغفرة من ربكم وجنة عرضها وجنة عرضها كعرض السماء والأرض أعدت أعدت للذين آمنوا بالله ورسله ذلك فضل الله يؤتيه من يشاء والله ذو الفضل العظيم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسولنا الكريم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم احفظنا من كل بلاء الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة اللهم أحسن عاقبتنا في الأمور كلها وأجرنا من خزي الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم صلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه يجمعين برحمتك يا رحم الرحيم Thank you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the khutbah. May Allah accept from Brother Zureyl Hashmi and Kari Abdul Majid. Uh, please remove the double park car from the IIT main parking lot. A recording of this khutbah is available on our Facebook and also at the YouTube channel IIT Films. Please subscribe it. Yes,